don't throw away your macrame scraps. You probably have tons like me because no matter how good you get at calculating cord lengths, you're always going to have cutoffs at the end. Doesn't matter if they're really tiny or really long, there is a use for them and I'm going to show you how. I encourage you to use your scraps to get creative with your macrame. It's a great way to experiment with different types of cord in one project and the last project I'm going to show you how I do this. You can use any size canvas for this project. Mine is quite small. It's a six by six canvas, but it's what I had on hand. Then I went online and I got inspired by shapes. A good search for this in Pinterest is rainbow shapes or plaster wall art. You can use long or short scraps for this project depending on the size of your canvas. I'm using a mason jar to trace the curved shape of the rainbow and then a straight edge for the sides. Then I used the other side of the mason jar because I wanted the shape to be slightly smaller and then I repeated the same steps. I used fabric glue or you could use white glue. I applied glue to the canvas and then placed my first cord, making sure I got my cord just how I liked it and also making sure that I covered up the pencil marks. I continued adding cords in the same way until there was no more canvas showing. I added glue as I needed for each cord, but you could also just cover the whole area with the glue at once and then add the cord. I like to make sure the cords are touching so there's no gaps in between where you could see the canvas. And at the end, I like to pat it down just to make sure it's all nicely secure. You wanna make sure there's enough length to overhang on the side. I follow the same process for the next rainbow shape. This is just one option of so many different patterns you can make and there's so many different macrame cords and colors you could use. You can see here the little adjustments I make as I go. And I finish filling it in just like I did the other one. I lay the canvas on its side and then I proceed to glue the sides so the cords are nice and secure. And I do that on both sides. It's really easy to get the cords nice and straight while the glue is still wet. Then I just cut the cords on both sides nice and even. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Macrame tassels are super easy to make. You can use them as a standalone wall hanging or add them as an element to any project. I use these three millimeter pieces to make this one and I use these six millimeter pieces and I made this one. I'm laying out six pieces of six millimeter cord. This is a super easy method to make tassels. Make them as big and thick as you like. You can use any cord thickness. Cut off any extra length. I've cut my pieces to about 30 centimeters and the finished length of my tassel is 11 centimeters. Comb out the cord. You can do this all together or individually, which I prefer. I bring them all together and then I give them another thorough combing. I use this thin string, but you could also use a few strands. However, I want my cord to be nice and long so I can use it in any project. Place your cord underneath in the middle and now tie a knot and you want to tie it really tight. Then tie another tight one. Lay it down and give it another comb. Cut a little piece of cord and then tie it fairly close to the top and make that another really nice tight double knot and cut those as close as you can to the knot. And now another combing. Cut off the ends. Give it another comb. And then a final trim. I'm gonna step you through how I did this project and I hope it encourages you to experiment with your scraps. I really wanted to start it off with a shag area and then I didn't really know where I was gonna go from there. All I knew is I want to use up scrap cord. This is the wall hanging I've already started. This shaggy part here, I'm using these four millimeter single strand scraps. 
this chord here, what I'm using as a filler chord for these double half hitches. I'm using this five millimeter, it's a twisted chord, their scraps as well. For the vertical cords that are attached to the dowel, I used new cord, this five millimeter cord. If you have really long scraps, you could use them for these vertical cords. I wanted cords that were about three meters long, so I opted for new cords. First, I'll show you how I did the shag. I'm taking my scrap cord and I'm cutting about five inch lengths. I take two of my cords, I fold them in half, then I lay them on top of my vertical cord, pull them around the back and up through the opening. Pull them up and make them nice and snug. I then pull on each individual cord just to make sure it's extra tight. I then cut it to the length that I want and I fluff it a little bit. Then I do another one in the same way, making it snug again and pulling the ends, giving it a trim. To prevent it from getting too crowded, I skip a chord and then go to the next one. I continue doing fringe all the way across. Next, I take one of my horizontal scraps and I cut it so it's a couple inches longer than I need on each side. Now I use that cord as the filler cord and do double half hitches all the way across. The first double half hitch is always a little tricky when you do this method. Normally I would tape the loose end to the counter so it holds it in place while I make that first knot. I don't know why I didn't do that this time, but that's what I suggest. Now I continue doing that double half hitch knot all the way across. This is a tutorial for the double half hitch knot in case you need to learn it. And in this tutorial, I cover how to add a cord like this rather than using an existing cord. I'll have this tutorial listed in the description below this video. I cut the ends of those filler cords at about a half an inch and then I comb them out. I wasn't sure how I was going to finish this piece, but in the back of my mind, I thought it would just be long fringe, which is a great way to use up scraps and you can use them in any project really. But that just wasn't really doing it for me when I got to this stage. But as you can see, I decided to go for feathers. I really love the way this ended up turning out. I'm going to use this end of the roll. It's a five millimeter single strand and I don't know if I'm going to buy more of this particular brand, so I'll just use it up now. I already did the first two feathers. So each feather needs four cords. I started with the four cords in the middle and you can see I have four cords here and four cords here. So in total, you're going to have five feathers. To make your feather, we're going to make a square knot. Take the cord on the left over the two middle cords, cord on the right around the back through the opening and then pull that so it's snug. Take the right cord over the two middle cords, the left cord around the back through the opening and make that one snug. I cut my lengths longer rather than shorter. I'd rather have my finished feather be too wide and then I can make it as narrow as I like rather than the reverse of it being too narrow and I can't widen it. So I'm cutting my lengths at about eight inches each. The outside cords of the square knot we'll use later. Take a piece of cord and fold it in half. Lay it on top of those cords. Wrap it around the back and up through the opening. And then make that snug and pull it up to the square knot. And then tighten it some more. Pulling the individual ends really helps to tighten. And then push them up tight to the square knot. With the next one, I go the other direction. So over the top, now I'm pulling the cords around the back and up through the opening. I pull the cords really tight again, each individual cord, and then I push them up really tight again. I keep alternating all the way down until I get the length of the feather that I want. Try and align your ends before you attach them to the cord. I like to comb the fringe as I go. And as per usual, I alternate between my comb and my brush. I do that on both sides. And then I continue making my feather. Feathers are one of my favorite way to use up scrap cord. They just are so fun and fluffy and just add so much texture to a piece. Here's what it looks like so far with the shaggy texture and the feathers before I give them a trim. 
Now it's time to get ready to trim the feathers. First, I get the other feathers out of the way. Then I trim these ends that were coming out of the top of the square knot. They're also going to become part of the feather now. And I just go through and give the feather a really good comb. Now I've flipped those other feathers right out of the way because I think that'll be easier to cut it. And I put my feather on a cutting mat and then I give it one more comb before I do the trim. I'm going to use a rotary cutter to cut my fringe. I'm going to go in and cut just the excess edges off of my feather because I'm not sure in the end how wide I'm going to want these feathers to be. First, I'm going to trim them all like this, and then when I look at them together, I'll decide how narrow I want to cut them. And I have a tutorial that explains why I like to use the rotary cutter, and in that tutorial, I go step by step through how I cut my fringe on a feather. I'll link that in the description below. This is how I decided to finish the feathers. The feathers in front are just overlaying the ones behind at the spine. And then I tiered the feathers at the bottom. Another great way to use up scraps are earrings. Here's a link to my most popular earring tutorial if you're inclined to try them. Leave me a comment below if you'd like to share how you used your scraps. I'd love to know.